Right. Hey everyone, thanks for clicking on this tutorial. Um, first off, I just want to say uh, thanks for, I think, just all the positive feedback on this uh, design. Um, honestly, this was a really, I feel like, simple and straightforward one. And I was, which again, just really surprised and grateful by just the feedback that I got from it. But as promised, um, here is a tutorial. Sorry it took so long. Just uh, have finally gotten settled from a lot of uh, life stuff. But here we go. Um, thanks for watching. And I'll try my best to explain this. I'm not really used to this kind of thing. Um, so I guess a general breakdown of what this is, I would say very core three components. Um, one is your audio system. So again, if you guys are familiar with Touch Designer, it's a very simple, straightforward um, audio file, device out, analysis, a math to kind of just bump up parameters, and then a null to drag everything from. Um, the overall kind of particle wireframe build um, you know, this is just based off of a, a circle chop or sop, excuse me, um, fed into these components, uh, your basic geometry, camera, render, and material setup using a line material for this one, and your post-processing stuff, which is, you know, going to be just comprised of image filters, um, your feedback displacement del um, loop, it's just a bunch of, you know, I would say common, straightforward um, tutorials and like, you know, setups that you can find on a lot of other touch designer videos that are probably a lot better than this one. <laughs> um, so just to go into depth, what we have here for, this is what you're gonna have for the basic kind of build of what this wireframe is. I'll highlight that one specifically so we could focus on this for now. So like I said, this is all just being built out of a circle um, a circle um, stop and what I'm having it do here is it's being fed into a noise the noise is what I use for just the general kind of wavy fluid movement um, which then goes into a twist twist being um, you know it kind of gives as you can see right here this kind of like you know obviously a twisted motion and this I find prevents the circle from looking too I guess two-dimensional and flat as you can see when it's rotating this is kind of what gives it that like again twisty constantly transforming evolving motion um, which then we are led into the transform um, again I have the transform y rotation on rotate um, just set to abs time dot seconds to the power of 100 um, so just to add more dynamic movement this is what <coughs> allows it to constantly be rotating so again it's these are the main core areas that you know you're kind of building the shape and the overall look to the your um circle because as you can see you know let's just change the period all the way to 10 you know there's not too much movement happening here i mean there is movement but it's definitely not as dynamic and visually i don't think it looks as cool so you know Honestly, a lot of this is just kind of preference. So, you know, there's not necessarily a specific way that you'd want this set up. It's just kind of, I think, ultimately what looks best to you. Um, let's see. So I guess going into it, you know, you have your particle system. Um, I'll talk about where the audio comes in. So this is gonna be the main kind of like area is what gets the movement of the circle wireframe particles whatever you want to call it um to i think visually rotate upon the bass drop or the beat um i've tried this with other audio tracks and i think for what the overall outcome of this visual was um i think this track um everything you can see through a little hole ultimately worked really good for it um there's just enough like you know slow like i think long lasting bass drops that would allow it to have this cool rotating look every single time we hit those low notes as you can see the bass hits boom that rotates like you know in a more sped up style as opposed to the consistent um speed and so i think that is what gives it like again a nice kind of audio reactive effect to it um let's see i guess i'll go into just my forces um 
again, not too much change. I literally just have this at a three, but again, you can play around with a lot of this stuff, just whatever is visually looking great to you. Um, so that's kind of, I guess, the overall build for your SOP stuff and everything. Um, what I have here now, again, you're gonna find this in pretty much almost every touch design tutorial you could find, but just your general geometry, your camera, uh, render setup, and I'm using the line material, which you know you copy into there. That gives you this uh, type of shape. Um, so after that part, I would say is when we go into the post processing, which again I would say very straightforward. Um, if you watch touch designer tutorials, you'll see a lot of people use this displacement feedback, you know, kind of image loop. Um, this is being fed into as you can see the feedback and then I have the pulse um, assigned or the reset assigned to um, the high notes right here um, and you'll see what that does right now I'll show you let's deactivate this and I'll go into the null oh, let's go into the comp so I have the comp to combine the um, the initial wireframe kind of build that goes into the feedback and displacement. Um, I kind of reattach this null back into this comp. So what you're getting technically is you get the displacement that goes into the comp, the displacement being affected by this noise and pixelate setup. Again, same thing. Um, I use the high and the lows to kind of just affect, you know, just the size of like the noise, you know, all the different parameters of it. And I use the pixelate just to give it a cool kind of glitchy effect, um, you know, make it look a little bit more high tech or whatever. And then I feed the null back into that comp. So you have these two, these two, um, you know, tops being um, composited over one another. And so as you can see, it just overall gives you this really cool kind of um, visual effect that, you know, it's kind of, I guess, glitching out, phasing in and out of itself and resetting over and over. Um, and again, I think this helps, um, I think as far as visually goes, um, it helps to have, again, nice and dynamic movement, but also setting up your um, particle system to be not too chaotic. You know, you want a little bit of structure still in there. Um, and then other than that, you know, it's kind of just going to be, um, I think kind of, you know, adding flair to it. You know, what I did, I think in the final design, I used some type of um, like just RGBA did, um, delay just to, you know, give some interesting colors happening here, a little bit of an extra delay effect, which I think looks cool. Right now it's just the standard, kind of looks like it's 3D almost. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, let's see. Um, I'll probably, you know, attach a link to just what this general build is. So, you know, you guys can go in and, mess around with it, try new styles, results, and see what you can come up with. But other than that, yeah, it's a relatively straightforward build. Um, you know, nothing too crazy, you know, like you don't need a super powerful laptop to process anything. But yeah, um, thank you guys for watching this and I'll try and post more in the future. Thank you.